Hey, Social Work 310 students. Welcome to week three. I hope you're enjoying the class. I know you're learning a lot. So I wanted to um, just go over what your responsibilities are this week. You have a lot of reading to do. You have a quiz to take. You have some videos to watch. I'd like to give you a lecture this week that's going to supplement some of what you're learning. Um, first of all, in preparation for your quiz, Make sure that you understand the definitions that are in your textbooks. Make sure you understand the definition for a functionalist. Know what ecosystems are. Understand conflict and social construction. Have a good working definition for diversity and understand the strengths perspective. It's a multiple quiz test and I think that you, you will have prepared well if you basically read, do the reading and make sure you go over the vocabulary words really well. And that should, um, that should help you succeed on that quiz. Um, especially the, those words I just gave you, that's, that's important. As you're getting ready to take your quiz, um, you're going to be going over all of the videos that I have prepared for you. And I know it's a lot, um, it feels heavy, but remember this is a 300 level course and this is probably one of the most important courses that you'll take through Great Basin College because this is going to prep you really well for applying into the UNR social work program. One of the things that we will start to do is go over the uh, Jonathan Causal book, Shame of the Nation. And this is a really great book. If you haven't already purchased it, for those of you who are audio learners like me, it is on Audible and um, you can listen to it. And that works out well too. Jonathan has written a lot of books. Uh, he's in his 80s now, but it's really interesting. If you, if you go on YouTube and uh, plug in his name, you'll find all kinds of great information. Uh, speeches that were given just a couple of years ago in which he talks about the problems continuing to be as great as they were you know 40 years ago when he first started writing about the problems that we had that we have in this country he talks about the American apartheid and and how there continues to be separation by race a lot of people want to say that it is uh, by poverty, but it often is by race. And if you look in rural Nevada, I mean, what would you say to that from what you've recognized of rural Nevada? One of the things that I would love to say to Jonathan Kozal, if I ever got to sit down and talk to him, would be, you know, you talk a lot about urban society and urban education have you looked at rural education you know you talk about the difference between uh the east side of of new york manhattan area and how they're so wealthy and they're only a few miles from some of the poorest school districts in the country well have you gone to battle mountain have you taken a look at at the the schools that we are providing the education that we're providing for our children in rural nevada and it can be, it can be uh, comparable. So one of the things that he has said is that there's no level playing field when it comes to education in our country. We like to think it's an economic divide rather than a racial divide because it makes us feel more comfortable. One of the things that he said is that his white friends tend to take it personally when he talks to them about the difference of funding that um, is along racial lines. And um, they're, they're almost apologetic in the fact that it's not equal, yet at the same time they send their children to private schools in which their children get a better education than um, kids that are coming from poverty or from minority backgrounds. One of my favorite quotes from Jonathan Cazell is, issues are big, children are small. And I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind, especially as social workers, we are looking to serve the vulnerable people in our population. And to Jonathan Kozal, that meant the children. And um, another quote from him is that, uh, okay, this happened when he had a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. Oprah told him she had a hard time reading his books at bedtime because they were too painful to read. Jonathan said to her, if it's painful for you to read, imagine how painful it is for me to write these things. Another little known fact about Jonathan Kozal is he was very good friends with Fred Rogers. 
And uh, Fred Rogers actually gave him a, a cute little art piece that includes musical notes that he has hung on his wall. And he was called, his nickname was the Doctor of Crayons. So as you start reading his book, keep these things in mind. Um, one last fun fact about Jonathan Kozal, he went to Harvard and a lot of his Harvard colleagues have said to him, you know, what a blessing you are to the people in the, in the urban areas that you teach and visit. And he says, I'm not seeking out, um, I'm not seeking to give them blessings. I'm seeking out blessings for myself. And I don't teach them as much as they teach me. He said he went in search of blessings rather than to be someone who is a conveyor of wisdom to them. And I think that's a really good attitude that all of us should reflect. Have a great week and uh, don't hesitate to text, email, or give me a call if you have any questions.